Hello everybody, welcome back to school. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing you all again and I know all of, this, all of the staff here are too. We've really missed you. I'd also like to welcome New Year 7 students in. It's a very strange time to be starting school, but you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll have a great time. We're really looking forward to getting back into teaching properly. Um, but before we do that, we've got some really um, important messages to give out over the next couple of days. I'm going to talk through the safety procedures that we're putting in place. The staff have worked really hard thinking very carefully about how to keep you all safe and us all safe. And if you follow these procedures carefully, think about this presentation, talk it through with your teachers. I'm sure that we'll all be able to get used to them very quickly um, and we'll all be able to get back into normal lessons as soon as possible. Thank you. So in this presentation I'd like to talk to you briefly about face masks and our rules on those, about the changes to the times of the day that we've put in place, about how you move around the school and what happens when you change lessons, about general hygiene and about what happens at break and lunchtime because that's a bit different to how we've done it in the past. Thank you. I just want to say a few things about face masks. We're actually one of the first schools in this country to ask students to wear face masks in lessons and not just in communal areas and dining halls and corridors. And I just wanted to explain why. I think we have to remember that face masks in lessons is something that happens in most countries throughout the world. Um, in the Far East, students have been wearing them for some time to combat pollution and the spread of um, other viruses such as SARS. So in places like Thailand and South Korea it's all perfectly normal. Um, in Europe because of the COVID-19 e epidemic that everyone in Spain for example all children over six now have to wear face masks in lessons um, and it's the same in parts of France and parts of Germany so it's something that is actually quite normal in other countries. It's not so normal in this country, um, but I want to explain why we've taken the decision to do that in lessons as well. Um, we know, the science tells us, that the chances of one of you, one of the students, being seriously ill with COVID-19 is tiny. Um, there are very, very, very few instances of anybody having to go to hospital with COVID, any student. The problem comes is because uh, we, we're not certain yet, but we think that students and young people can spread the disease. And of course, our job, and I know you'd want to do this, is to protect your families at home. And also my job is to protect my staff. Um, wearing a face mask actually protects other people. It doesn't necessarily protect you so much, but it protects other people. So if 30 people in a classroom are all wearing face masks, our staff are safer. And if you don't catch it because everybody else around you is wearing a face mask, then you can't spread it and take it home. So we're going to review this policy in a couple of weeks. Um, face masks can be uncomfortable at times, but I think we'll all get used to using them. And I just want to talk very briefly about some of the rules for using face masks because um, you have to be very careful how you take them on and take them off. So this is my face mask, matching my tie, but yours doesn't have to. Um, when you take put a face mask on, you've got to be very careful not to touch the outside. So you put it on very carefully around your ears. And it's important that it covers your nose. You see some people occasionally walking around and they pull it down like this. That won't have any protection at all because the nose um, is exposed. So you cover your nose and your mouth like that. And you should have clean hands really before you put it on. But what's most important is when you take it up, when it's on, you try not to touch your face. That's very difficult to do, I understand that. But you try not to touch your face. And when you take it off, you take it off there without touching the front, because the front is where 
all the germs are. So one way of looking after this is to actually, what I tend to do is I carefully, without touching any of the mask, is to just fold it up carefully so that, and put it in a plastic bag that I carry around rather than stuff it in my pocket, which is also full of germs possibly. And then when I need it again, I take it out of the bag and I very carefully put it on. But I think the most important thing is when you take it on and put it on and take it off, is that you don't touch the front, the inside or the outside, or you do that as little as possible. And that stops from, um, the virus from spreading and transferring onto your fingers. So the timing of the day has changed now too. This is a temporary measure and once we get back to normal we'll go back to what our new times were going to be which was an 8.30 start and a 2.45 finish every day of the week. But for now we've had to extend our day to 3.15 and again I want to explain why. One of the ways in which the virus can spread is if there's too many people crammed into one area um, at a time. And our corridors are narrow and uh, we have 1300 students now in school. So if we had a normal change of lesson, we would find the corridors really cramped and the risk of spreading the virus would be higher. So what we've done is we've extended the day. The lessons won't be any longer. But we've put a gap between every lesson called a transition point. We put a gap of five or six minutes between every lesson. And what we're saying is we're staggering the way that you come into lessons and go out of lessons. So um, students will move a year group at a time. So when, when they're told to do um, at, the, at the end of a lesson, the sixth form will move first. They'll go and then they'll go outside to what we call a designated area and then year 11 will go and then year 10 will go etc etc and you're all going to be given a designated area outside school this is your designated zone and you must go there at the start of the day and you must go there between every lesson and you must go there at break and those areas will be supervised but it's really important that you go back to those areas every time. If we have people hanging around in the school buildings um, uh, between lessons because they think it's, uh, it's easier to do to get to the next lesson, then we risk spreading uh, the virus more. So please follow these simple rules. Your teachers will guide you, but I think what they'll probably do now is they'll pause this presentation and they'll make sure that you know in your year group where your designated zone is, where you, um, what the timings of the day are for you because you might have a, an early break or a, a late break or an early lunch or a late lunch. We'll say more about break and lunchtime later in this presentation. You're also going to have a designated toilet block so your teachers will again tell you which year group uses which set of toilets and we'd like you to stick to that as well please. There isn't much point in us trying to keep you separate while you're in school if when you're outside school, on your way to school in the morning or on your way home at night, you congregate in large groups and mix with other students from lots of other year groups and don't socially distance. So please have a think about that and on your way to school try and make sure that you're in small groups, that you walk in far apart and that you're trying to um, stay safe in that way too. Another change this year is that we're saying you can't come onto the school site before eight o'clock in the morning. Now most of you don't anyway, but in the past a handful of students have. But the school site will only be open from eight o'clock onwards. And when you come into school, you can't go into the school buildings as you might have done before. We're asking you to go to your designated zone outside um, uh, and wait there. And then at the start of the day, that's where all of your um, the, the tutors and the, and the year team will meet you before the school starts. There are two exceptions to that, of course, being allowed in the buildings. If you want to use the toilet, you can do so between 8.15 and 8.30 before the start of school because staff will be on duty supervising the toilets. And we hope to get our breakfast club running up and running as soon as possible. It won't be up and running in the first couple of weeks, 
but we'll try and get that started as soon as possible and if you're part of that obviously you can come into the school buildings. I've already talked about how we move between lessons in, in, in a staggered way and different year groups leaving lessons uh, before others. Um, your teacher might pause the video now and talk you briefly through this particular slide but as I said a bell will go five minutes before the end of the lesson. That doesn't mean it's the end of everybody's lesson, that's a signal for the teachers. But after that bell's gone then one by one each year group will finish their lesson and leave. Sixth form first, then year 11, then year 10, 9, 8 and 7. And you must go straight outside, not go to the toilet, you must go straight outside to your designated zone. You must use the toilets designated for your year group wherever you are in school. We're going to limit the number of students in the toilet and there'll be members of staff on duty outside um, to do that. But if you arrive at the toilet and there's not a member of staff on duty, please be sensible. Please think about how many students are inside and if you're not able to socially distance properly, please wait outside until they come out. Hygiene is extremely important. You must make sure you wash your hands after using the toilet. And we, the toilets are not going to be available during lesson changeover. We need to move everybody out of the building so before we can move them safely back in. They are available at, before school from 8.15. They're available at break and at lunchtime. And in an emergency, they're available during lessons. Each time you arrive to a classroom, um, there'll be a bottle of sanitizer there and you'll be asked to sanitize your hands before you sit down. It's really important that you sit in the place that the teachers ask you to sit and that you don't move around the classroom and unless you're expressly asked to do so by the teacher. So no getting up just to go to the bin, no getting up to go to the toilet unless you've asked for permission in advance, um, no moving around the room at all. Um, between lessons, once you've left your lesson, the teacher will left, then get the classroom ready for the next class and they've got a spray um, which they'll spray the desks and the surfaces and we've got a lot of extra cleaning in place in school so at different points uh, before and after school and during the day there'll be other cleaning that takes place um, around the school site um, and obviously at the end of every day we'll make sure that the desks are cleaned down properly with a, deep, a, a deeper clean than, than just a spray. So we're paying lots of attention to hygiene in class and we'd ask you to do the same. Break time is now during a lesson. It'll either be right at the start, in the middle or at the end. And it'll be supervised by your teacher and it will happen in your designated zone. So you'll go outside at break time unless it's raining. And if it's raining, the teachers will keep you in your class at break time where you have a break but you won't be allowed out unless you need to go to the toilet. So at break time, uh, your teacher will guide you where to go, uh, when it starts, when it ends, and you will um, be allowed to go to the toilet, but you won't be allowed to go anywhere else in the school buildings. Um, and we won't have a break time food service. So if you do want a snack at break, please bring, feel free to bring your own snack as long as you dispose of the litter properly. Lunchtime, like break time, is staggered too. So depending on which year group you're in, you'll either have your lunch at the start of period four, in the middle of period four, or at the end of period four. And you have to go to your designated dining hall. Um, so the only um, exception, everybody goes to the designated dining hall, but year seven are split. So um, again, step tutors will remind you which dining hall you go to, but 7A, 7b and 7c will be in Einstein's and all of the other step groups in year 7 will be in Da Vinci's. You have to remain inside uh, in the dining hall at lunchtime. You aren't allowed to wander the school. There are lessons happening elsewhere and of course we want to keep everybody safe and, uh, and in one place. So whether you're having a packed lunch or whether you're having a hot meal or a snack you all go to your designated lunch area and you remain in there. The only exception again is that you will be allowed to go to the toilet um, and you'll, there'll be a member of staff on duty outside the toilets to make sure that it's not overcrowded 
and that it's safe. You must wear your face mask while you're in the dinner queue. You can remove your face mask when you're sitting at your table. We would ask you not to move around once you're sat down at a table in the dining hall. Please sit there for the remainder of lunch unless you're going to the toilet. Um, the usual fingerprint system, the top the machines that we use to top up um, balances um, aren't in operation because obviously that involves lots of people touching the same machine, so that's not very hygienic. So we've asked your parents to top up your accounts with money. If you haven't got any money on your account when you get to the machine, don't panic and don't worry. Please tell a member of the catering team. We don't want anybody to go without food at lunchtime. We have got a slightly reduced lunch offer um, just because of the restrictions in the kitchen, but it's still a really good offer. The food in our school is excellent. And uh, on the next slide, we're going to um, put up the menus um, and we'd ask you, these are on our website as well, but it would be useful again if the, if the uh, um, slides were paused and just give you a quick brief look. It would be useful when you get to the dining hall that you know what you're going to get in advance um, rather than stand and uh, uh, wonder in the queue and slow the system down. So please have a look at that. Thank you. If you're using Da Vinci's and that's your designated dining hall, the queue now is in the hall along the wind by the window um, and not down a, a corridor. Um, that's because there'll be lessons going on down there. If your designated dining hall is Einstein's, then the normal queue for most year groups is down the B block, uh, the main corridor in B block. But year seven, your queue is different. You must come in through the uh, entrance next to the toilets near the tennis courts, and you'll queue along that corridor there to get to the front of uh, the queue for your year group. One of the strengths of our school is how well our students behave. Um, well, behaviour is even more important now, good behaviour is even more important now. Um, lots of studies have shown that um, viruses spread when people are shouting, when people are running, when people are gathered together in, in large groups and when people are being boisterous and, and are jumping on top of each other. We don't want any of that kind of behaviour in school. It's really important to walk calmly um, at a distance when we can manage it, and to actually manage, be responsible for our own behaviour and regulate our own behaviour. That's going to keep ourselves safe, our family safe, and it's going to keep everybody else safe too. Um, I hope I don't need to have to remind you, but there are some behaviours that are obviously very uh, completely unacceptable. Um, to pretend you've got COVID, to pretend you're spreading it, to cough as if you're ill when you're not, those kind of things are completely out of order and will be dealt with really seriously by staff. Um, I think, though, I can trust um, our students to be really sensible and to behave appropriately and to keep us all safe. So that's it. Thanks for listening to the safety messages. I'm sure that your step tutor will go through them in a bit more detail and pause the slides from time to time. And what they will do is answer your questions. So if you can think of any questions that you've had by watching this presentation, please don't be shy and ask those questions so that you're exactly, absolutely sure what you need to do. We're really looking forward to um, having you back in school. And what we don't want is these safety messages and all of this talk of COVID to get in the way of what you're here to do, which is learn. The measures we put in place will hopefully mean that the lessons will be as normal and interesting as possible. We've got a lot of work to do this year, um, but I don't want you to worry about falling behind if you're in older year groups and you, you feel you've missed too much school. Our teachers are really um, clear about what still needs to be, do, to be done and we've got plenty of time to do it. So work hard, be kind to each other and I hope you have a fantastic year.